lovely, lovely imps. Today, I have a treat for you. Uh, as many of you know, Donald Trump recently lost a pretty major court case. This court case was a defamation, sexual assault, and rape court case. Now, it's a civil court case, not a criminal one, so he's not going to jail. However, he is liable for a rather large amount of money and a bunch of other things as a result of this case. Now, uh, just so that we know in advance, uh, he was not found guilty on... Uh, the or he was not found liable is the term that's used in civil cases He was not found liable for the rape charges because there was not enough evidence to prove that this is unfortunately very very common um, It's pretty difficult to uh, win a rape case at all because the uh, evidentiary requirements to prove rape are often nearly impossible to attain uh, unless you are like literally filmed doing something or there's a, a bunch of witnesses, it's very, very difficult. This is one of the reasons why uh, a lot of rape crimes that uh, assuredly happened uh, do not end up being criminally punished because the evidence that's required to prove rape is quite high. However, he did indeed, he was indeed found liable for both defamation and sexual assault. Um, however, we're not actually going to be talking at great great length about the court case findings because that's pretty straightforward. The jury ruled that he was liable and the jury also ruled that he was liable on the sexual assault. What we are going to be watching is the full video of his deposition, which was released very recently. If you have not seen this, I have not seen the entire video. I saw a single clip of the video. Um, actually, I saw a clip of Howard Stern reacting to a clip and it made me laugh so hard that I knew that I had to share it all with you. So today we are going to get to watch Donald Trump uh, absolutely crumple uh, under a civil lawsuit deposition. Um, it is, uh, it, it has, this, this video is making the rounds because it is so audacious. So I'm very much, I'm very much looking forward to watching this with you. Um, anyway, that's, that's, that's the gift from Demon Mama to the Imps today. So, uh, we don't really, we don't, we don't, I don't really need to wind up with anything else. No preamble today. We just got to get right into it. Let's watch the Trump deposition uh, the together, shall we? And this one is conveniently uh, uh, subtitled for us uh, so that we can make sure that we can hear all of the glorious Donald Trumpisms. Uh, as you all know, Donald Trump has been having a rough go of it, which he deserves for sure. Uh, but today we just get to enjoy him trying to react to being asked questions. Which part did you see? I'm not gonna, <laughs> the part that I saw, I saw the part when they asked him about the grab, the, the pussy grabbing. Um, and I saw about a 20 second clip. So I have seen the vast majority of this I haven't seen. Um, now I don't know what all, like how much of this video we're gonna watch. I, we might watch all of it if it's all really good. Um, but we're gonna watch at least a good chunk of it um, because I have heard that it is wild, okay? Yeah, I heard it's all really good. Um, yes, LH Fruit with the $2, the incredibly generous $2, we'll be talking about that afterwards. Also, thank you very much, Thomas Brand, for the incredibly generous super chat. This show is 100% viewer supported. So make sure you smack that like button, press subscribe, and toss me some super chats. Anyway, let's get right into it. Let's do it. Let's do it. 1990s would it be fair to call you or to characterize you as a real estate tycoon. Yeah. Um, Trump Tower. Um, on Fifth Avenue, that was completed in 1983. Around that time, yes. And when did you move into the uh, your penthouse apartment there? Maybe a year later. And that remained your primary residence until you were elected president, correct? That's right. And Trump Tower, where's Trump Tower located? 
I obviously know. 57th and 5th. And at some point, uh, you became the owner of the Plaza Hotel in New York, correct? This yes. is his apartment, And where's by the, way. the Plaza Hotel located? Yeah, 59th. Just, just, just so we're clear, the apartment they're discussing right now looks like this. It is like the ultimate eyesore you could possibly imagine. I can't, how can you, how could you ever even be comfortable? Look at these chairs. These chairs aren't even, everything is made out of gold and it looks like shit. It's like blinding. I know that like people are like, yes, yes. But honestly, this is like what I would imagine like a child's idea of what a rich person, like what a rich person's house looks like. It's like a baby would be like, everything would be made of gold and the toilet would be made of gold and everything is gold and the toilet paper is money. It's like the most swagless way of flaunting your wealth. It's uh, just, just paint everything gold or something. Fifth Avenue. And, um, for how long were you the owner withdrawn? During what years were you the owner of the Plaza Hotel? I don't know the years, about five years. And do you know when it began, when you bought it? Uh, in the early, early 90s. Okay. Now, in the 80s and 90s, is it fair to say you had a, a busy social life? I don't know, I mean, uh, I don't know what you, you'd have to define social life. I wouldn't say uh, <laughs> that busy. I was working very hard, so I didn't have time to be too much onto the social calendar, but yeah. Uh, define social life. Well, let me, let me try to phrase it this way. In the evenings during that period, you went out quite a bit in New York City to benefit. Also, keep in mind him saying this. Just remember, Donald Trump through, through the 90s, he was photographed at these events. So him saying, oh, I don't know, I didn't have much of a social life. He, there are videos and pictures of him at events. So it's just, I don't know, like, why would you ever, why would you ever do this? He, oh God, oh, let's just. It's galas, etc. A lot of charity events, yes, uh, but I don't think that much. No. So, in this, in the period, um, in the 80s and 90s, we've already discussed, you would go to benefits and parties, um, and is it fair to say that a lot of those parties, there would be a, um, or benefits, there would be kind of a photography line, either at the beginning or throughout the event? The, the person, the lawyer asking the questions here is literally trying to, to, to it nudge him to be like, you know that you were photographed at all these events, right? Like every event that you went to and the dates of those events are, are a matter of the public record. You understand that? And he's just like, oh uh, yeah, yes. so. And that people will take photographs like Getty images and then put them, right. put them out. And this is another Getty images printout. And is it fair to say that this document indicates that you were the grand marshal of the New York City Veterans Day Parade on over November 10, 1995 in New York City. Yes. Similarly true that during this same period you made appearances on television, correct? Yes. Um, sitting here today, can you recall any inter TV interviews that you did that you remember? I did everything. When you say everything, give me some well, examples if I you can. Did, I did the late night shows. I did the uh, newscasts. I even did some of the political shows on Sunday, even though I wasn't really in politics as I am now. But they wanted me to do that, I, and I did that. Uh, they'd ask me to do them all the time. So I did quite a bit of television. I think you already answered this question, but just so the record is clear, did you watch the program Good Morning America from time to time in this period of the late 1980s through the mid-1990s? A little bit. A lot of Apple says, remember, chat, his entire defense in this particular case is that he claims he never met her in, in his whole life. Oh, my God. Uh, did you appear on the Today Show during this period? Yes. Uh, same question. Did you watch the Today Show during this period? A little bit. During this period, did you have any friends uh, in the television industry who worked in the television industry? 
Probably. I wasn't much involved at that point in the television industry, but I probably did. Anyone come to mind right now? Maybe Bob Wright. Who was Bob Wright? He was the head of NBC, I think, at that time. What about um, Roger Ailes? When did you become friends with Rod Roger Ailes? Later. Ailes? Approximately? During the, uh, more in the uh, seven, eight year ago period. Uh, what years were you married to? Roger Ailes is the Fox News guy. He's the founder of Fox News. So, Murdoch is like the owner of the Fox General Network, who we talked about, Rupert Murdoch. He's the guy who owns like the broader Fox Network. Roger Ailes is the guy who is like, Fox News is my thing. I want to found, I want to make Fox into a news brand. Roger Ailes was like the, the guy who did Fox News. Um, your first wife, Ivana Trump. So, uh, about 78 to 90s. Your um, your next wife was a woman by the name of Marla Maple. Right. And um, sitting here today, do you recall what years you were married to Ms. Maples? Um, I'd have to get the exact dates for you. I can do that very easily. In the course of your dating life and your married life, did you have occasion uh, to buy gifts for women you were seeing? Not much, actually. Well, um... I mean, if it was a birthday or something, I guess, yeah. Dude! <laughs> Did you ever buy anything nice for your wives? Uh, no. I mean, maybe, yes. Uh, this is like, oh my, oh my god! It's already, we're only five minutes in and it's just, this is just him, he's just voluntarily posting cringe. Wouldn't you, the, the, to me, the obvious answer here, I mean, unless he literally didn't, is you just have a simple yes, no answer, right? Like, you just go, yes, I bought gifts for my wives, duh. And other than birthday presents, did you buy gifts? for women you were dating? I mean, it's possible, but I don't think very much, no. I take it you bought uh, gifts uh, for your wives for their birthdays? Yes, generally. And I take it you bought gifts for women you were dating? It's, you know, probable. Wait, he just said no, he didn't! Oh, God. He, does he even remember what he said five seconds ago? He just said, no, I didn't buy gifts for women I was dating. I only bought it for my wife's birthdays. Oh, Jesus At Christ. At least in your first marriage, you were seeing women outside of your marriage while you were married, correct? I don't know. Well, you were very public about the fact that you were seeing Ms. Maples when you were still married to, Ms., to Ivana Trump, no? No, I don't think I was public about it. Well, no. there were, lo there were many, many it. articles about it at the time, correct? Yeah. No, I don't think I was public about it. But if, uh, uh, Dude. No, I don't think I was public Dude. about it at all. Yeah, isn't it true that you were seeing Ms. Maples before you were divorced from Ivana Trump? I don't know. It's, uh, it was toward the end of the marriage, uh, so I don't... Wait. If it was towards the end of the marriage, wait, I don't know. It was towards the end of the marriage. She just asked, "Did is it true that you were seeing that you were seeing Miss Maples before the marriage was over?" And here he says, "I don't know. It was towards the end of the marriage." Oh my God! I don't know, but also yes. Okay, I have to take a moment here. I have to take a moment here. This is terrible. This is hilarious. But I want you all to remember something, okay? <laughs> Trump fans, remember back in uh remember back in 2016 or 2015. I don't remember the year exactly when he when he was on the news and he said 
He was just like, uh, I could, uh, I could go, uh, into fi- on Fifth Avenue and shoot someone in the face, and my followers wouldn't even give a shit. Do you remember him doing that? I know I don't have a perfect Trump impression, but I don't really care. Do you guys uh, remember that? He was 100% right about that, and no Trump person will ever watch this. The Trumpers who watch this turn their brain off at the exact same times that he turns his brain off, and so they're not gonna hear anything contradictory when he literally says, I don't know if I was dating this woman. I was dating this woman at towards the end of my marriage. And then the lady's like, I just asked you if you were dating her before the divorce happened. And he goes, well, yeah, but the divorce wasn't over, but I don't know if the divorce, I don't know if my marriage was over yet. And the lady's just like, But Trump fans, again, don't care. So I, I just felt the need to remind everyone <laughs> that this is for our enjoyment only. This is for us to sit here and, and, and gaze into the abyss that is a life of lies, s just slowly starting to catch up with you just a tiny, tiny bit. Yeah, Donald Trump was called by Jesus Christ to be our God Emperor. I had a vision. I was painting my house and I passed out into a bucket of paint because there was I forgot to open the windows while I was painting the walls. And I had a vision that Donald Trump was supposed to be the president and that God, Jesus Christ, chose him. And then you go... Well, wait a minute, Didn't don't you think that Jesus Christ would have a problem with somebody sexually assaulting people and lying all the time? And they go, shut up, Satan, shut up. No, really, I, it, could be a, it could be a lap over, but I don't really know. Did you ever have occasion to go uh, to the department store Bergdorf Goodman? Very rarely. You say very rarely. Can you give me more detail? How rarely? I mean, I, almost, for me, almost never. I would very rarely go there. When you went there, what do you recall shopping for? I don't know. It's possible I, I was there, but I don't know that I ever shopped there for myself. Uh, so when you shopped there for yourself, to the extent you went there, you were shopping for others? I don't think I ever shopped for others. It's possible <sighs> that... Uh, one or both of my Which wives. Which one yeah. is it? Did you very rarely go there? Did you not buy for your... He's literally just... There, There is no truth, is there? He doesn't know what they want. Donald Trump is so used to just reflecting the, the energy of, his, of a crowd of simps that when someone is just asking him simple yes, no, truthful questions, he doesn't know what to say. He actually doesn't remember what it's like to not just be channeling the energy of a rally. I'm, I'm accidentally making him sound less full of shit. I, I don't know like this is just a level of like I don't know like it, it sounds like he doesn't know where he is I would say this is dementia, but I don't know that he actually has dementia I don't know that he can use dementia as an excuse here. I just think he's like compulsively lying Great to see you Merrick. Hope you're doing well This is off the rails so far and we're only six minutes in <laughs> Uh. Um, sorry, I don't know. I would very rarely go to that store. And, uh, when I would go there, um, which I basically, I never went there. I don't think I ever went there, actually. I would go there infrequently, but when I never went there, because I didn't go there, I would buy things for other people that weren't me. But I don't buy things for other people, so I don't know, actually. Jesus Christ. There a little bit, but, uh, I don't remember ever buying something for myself at Bergdorf. Okay. I, I, rent, I went there very seldom, if almost if ever. Then let's limit it to Bergdorf's. Bergdorf's uh, was pretty close to Trump Tower and very close to the Plaza Hotel, correct? That's right. I'm handing you a document uh, that's been marked as DJT18. It bears the Bates Range Carol 
24378 through 24385. Do you have that in front of you? Yeah. Um, sitting here today, do you recognize this document? No. Um, I will represent to you that this is the excerpt from Ms. Carroll's book that was published in New York Magazine online, originally online, on June 21, 2019. Okay. Um, at any point in time, oh, did no. you read this article? Excuse me? I, I, okay, I'm gonna just, I'm, I have not seen this part, okay? I told you the clip that I've seen. The rest of this is a fresh react from me, okay? I'm gonna guess that he's gonna say, he just said he's never seen this article. He's just said he doesn't know what it is. I'm gonna guess he tweeted about it a whole bunch. That there's, that there are public tweets that he made about it. I'm gonna guess, actually, he might have even talked about it on TV. I'm gonna guess that he's gonna say, I've never seen this thing in my life, and he fucking tweeted about it or talked about it on TV. Did you ever read this article, this document? No, I don't believe I did. Sending you a book, it's marked as DJT19. It's a book by E. Jean Carroll. It says, what do we need men for? And... Yeah, no, no, nobody posts spoilers. I know that some of you have seen this already, but please don't spoil for me. I have not seen this. I, the only part that I've seen is the part where he says, um, I'm trying to remember the part now. I'm blanking on the on the other, the only part that I've seen. The only part that I've seen is what I mentioned earlier in the stream. I'm, I'm thinking about this now and I can't even remember what I said before. Uh, good thing I'm not in a de deposition, I guess. If you look at the publication date, it says first edition, July 2019. Do you have that? Do you have yeah. the book in front of you? I'm sitting here today, sir. Have you ever read? Oh, yes. I remember now. The The only part of this that I've seen is the part where he says, uh, where he's asked about the grab her by the pussy comment. And then he says, rock stars have done that for a million years, which we're going to get there. And I'm sure that's going to be amazing. But that's the only part that I've seen. I have seen nothing else of this trial, of this deposition. Either this book in its entirety or any portion of this book. No, nope, never have. Never, I've never seen the book. Actually. Okay. You responded publicly to Ms. Carroll's allegations <laughs> on the same I day that the excerpt. I fucking called it. I knew it. It was published in New York Magazine, which was June 21, 2019, <laughs> correct? I think so. Um, let's take a look at that. So what we've handed you as DJ T20. Two seconds ago. Less than a minute ago, he said he's never seen or heard of this thing in his life. And now he was just asked, did you respond to this publicly? And he went, yes, to the thing that he supposedly has never read or seen in his life. What is, what is he doing? Oh, no. Is a blown up for legibility purposes version of a tweet uh, posted by a woman by the name of Laura Litvin at 5.17 p.m. on June 21st, 2019. Do you have that in front of you? Yes. Oh, no, no. Dude. The statement that is in this tweet, is this a statement that you gave? I mean, essentially, that's what I said, yeah. If you could read that statement. <laughs> what do you mean? It says, it's, a sta it's a direct quote. It's a, uh, this is a press release from President Donald Trump. Dude. <laughs> Lawyers on suicide watch? Fucking true, dude! Statement from President Donald J. Trump. Regarding the quote story, unquote, by E. Jean Carroll, claiming she once encountered me at Bergdorf Goodman 23 years ago, I've never met this person in my life. She is trying to sell a new book that should indicate her motivation. It should be sold in the fiction section. Shame on those who make up false stories of assault to try to get publicity for themselves or sell a book or carry out a political agenda like Julie Swetnick, who falsely accused Justice Brett Kavanaugh. It's just as bad for people to believe it, particularly when there is zero evidence. Worse still for a dying publication to try to prop itself up by peddling fake news. It's an epidemic. 
Ms. Carroll in New York Magazine, colon, no pictures, no surveillance, no videos, no reports, no sales attendance around, question mark, question mark. I would like to thank Berdorf Goodman for confirming they have no video footage of any such incident because it never happened. False accusations diminish the severity of real assault. All should condemn false accusations and, actual, and any actual assault in the strongest possible terms. If anyone has information that the Democratic Party is working with Ms. Carroll or New York Magazine, please notify us as soon as possible. The world should know what's really going on. It's a disgrace and people should pay dearly for such false accusation. See, that, that's what you have in front of you? Yeah. And I think you've already confirmed that this is a statement that you gave uh, to someone on your staff to give to the press. Yeah. Let's mark as DJT21. <laughs> Donald Trump's lawyers right now. No! A document bearing the True. base range. DJT21, this is the next one. DJ 2021, a document during the Bates range, MP 1795 through MP, I've got it. Just oh my God. Through MP 1807. You have that in front of you? Yeah. And these are statements that were put out when you were President of the United States? Yeah. And if you look at the top email, kind of the address of the email, it says under that, remarks by President Trump before Marine One departure. Yes. Marine One is a helicopter? Yes. Um, and if you look where it shows you speaking about halfway or two thirds of the way down the document, it says, the very first thing you say, so we're going to Camp David. Yes. So am I correct in interpreting this as this is a statement you made um, while boarding or getting on to Marine One? Looks like it. To go to Camp David? It looks like. Okay. Let's go now to the third statement, which we're going to mark as this one I can do, DJ 222. Thanks. Thank you. And you have in front of you, sir, a document, um, five page document. Oh, God. The first page says in, uh, in bold type. Exclusive, Trump vehemently denies E. Jean Carroll allegations, says she's not my type. Uh, it's from a publication known as The Hill. It's dated June 24th, 2019. Oh, no, and it's no. attributed to uh, the gentleman Jordi Jordan Fabian and, or maybe not be gentlemen, by, it's attributed to two people, Jordan Fabian and Sagar and Genty. You see that? Yes. Oh no, Sagar! Sagar and Jenny, oh no! How did Sagar get himself wrapped up in all this? Um, so this is two days after the last statement we're looking at, which was on June 22nd. Um, do you recall having an interview with reporters from The Hill on June 24th, 2019? Vaguely, yes. And do you recall where that interview took place. I think it was in the Oval Office. And session with the tier one subscription. Thank you very, very much. Hope my night. Uh, hey, mama, hope your night's going well. Thank you for these blessed horns. You're very, very welcome. Thank you for supporting the show. Uh, you're quoted just below that paragraph as saying as follows. And this one I'll read. Um, I'll say it with great respect. Number one, she's not my type. Number two, it never happened. It never happened. Okay. And then the reporters say, the president said, said while well, seated behind the resolute desk in the Oval Office. See that? This guy, the fact that Donald Trump ever even managed to be president, that alone should make literally every single person lose all faith in the institution of American governance, okay? Like, the, the highest office in our country was occupied by a guy who is fucking disgusting to women, and when faced with an allegation, his, his, he thought it would be a great idea to, from the desk of the president, say, she's not my type. It's, it's just, oh my fucking God.
Oh, we are so, like, I know that it's like, it feels like, it feels like for years, everybody just was sitting there just being like, oh my God, how did this happen? But every time something like this happens, you just got to go, how did... How stupid, it really is no different than like medieval kings where it's like they they executed the 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 court jester because the 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 court jester made them laugh too hard and they choked on their big turkey leg and it and then they, with while they were choking they vomited their turkey and and uh, their their turkey and uh, and fucking eel pie onto their onto their gilded thing and so they're like oh kill the jester and so the knights like slaughter the jester in front of a crowd of peasants and and that's just what we live in now. There's no fucking difference between then and now. It's the same shit. This guy fucking sexually assaults a woman and then goes, uh, yeah, hold on. Let me go to my nice, fancy, official Oval Office president's desk and just go, um, yeah, not my type. Um, I think she's ugly. Jesus fucking Christ. Yes, I do. Um, and... The statement that I just read that said, begins, I'll say it with great respect. Um, that was a statement that you made to the reporters for The Hill on June 24, 2019, correct? Yes. And same set of questions. Um, I take it, sir, that you stand by that statement today? Yes, I do. So before you made your statements that it never happened in 2019, did you or anyone on your staff reach out to anyone at Bergdorf Goodman? I didn't have to reach out to anybody because it didn't happen. Um, and, and by the way, if it did happen, it would have been reported within minutes. Talking about going to a major floor, probably, I assume, the most important floor, uh, a major floor in a major department store that's a very busy store, by the way, and check out counters and everything else. and. I would be in there. I mean, it's the most ridiculous, it's the most ridiculous, disgusting story. It was just made up. After you... Well, I never went into the store, but if I did, I would be on the most important floor because I'm a very important man. And so you're telling me that in this store that I wasn't in, on the most important floor for important men like me, that there wasn't any checkout desks? And the checkout desks, that I would be around them as an important man on the important floor of the important store? Oh my god. What is this? What the fuck is this? Made. Um... <laughs> the statements that you made in June of 2019, did you or anyone working for you reach out to Bergdorf Goodman? After the statement was made, no. In your June 21 statement that's marked as Exhibit 20, uh, you say, and this is the Litvin tweet, I, I never met oh, this person boy. in my life. Yes. Was that a true statement when you made it on... June 21, 2019? It was a true statement when I made it. Uh, I think subsequently, or at some point, they showed a picture on a receiving. I was on a celebrity line for a charity. And I think I was either shaking her hand or her husband's hand on a receiving line. Like I say, shake a lot of hands with people. But I had no idea who she was. So at the, if I can understand your testimony, sir, you're saying that at the time you made the statement that's in DJT20, um, you were not aware of ever having met Ms. Carroll. You have since seen a photograph that shows... It was true when I made it, and then it turned out that I was lying, so now it's not true. Uh, Trump, that's not how the truth works. Yes, it is. My, oh my God! You with Ms. Carroll on a receiving line, correct? along with a lot of other Objection people. Form. This was a very public. Uh, I think it was a charity or a celebrity event or something, and uh, I think that's her. Okay, so let's big claim to fame. You know that she shook my hand at some celebrity Dude, event. Oh my God! So he literally. Okay, keep in mind. 
again, this is a legal deposition. And he's sitting here being like, oh yeah, her big claim to fame is that she got to shake my hand. He's doing fucking petty insult, bitchy uh, uh, gossip crap in the middle of his legal deposition when he's just been exposed and he even realized that he's been exposed as lying, that he had indeed met her in the past when he made that statement. Whether he remembered it or not, it wasn't true that he had never met her. And he just said, no, the truth, the statement was true, even though it's provably false. And now he's doing bitchy shit as if that's gonna work in a, in a court of law claim to fame, you know, that she shook my hand to some celebrity event. So, so the answer to my question is yes, that after you made the statement, you were, became aware that there's a photo of you with Ms. Carroll in a receiving line, correct? At some point, okay. I saw there was a photo on a receiving line, yes. Okay, let's uh, mark the photo. What number are we at? To? What? 23. Here in front of you, a black and white photograph that we've marked as DJT23. And I'm going to ask you, is this the photo that you were just referring to? I think so, yes. Okay. And do you recall when you first saw this photo? At some point during the process, I saw it. That's, uh, I guess, her husband, John Johnson, who was an anchor for ABC. Nice guy. I thought, I mean, I don't know him, but I thought he was pretty good at what he did. Um, I don't even know who the woman, let's see, I don't know who, th it's Marla. You say Marla's in this photo? That's Marla, yeah, that's, that's my wife. Which one, woman are you pointing to? No. That's Here. Carol. Oh, is that, The oh, person okay. you just pointed to was oh, Eugene Carroll. Who is that? Who is this? That didn't, this isn't real. This can't be fucking real. <laughs> this can't be real. He forgot who his own wife was. And he pointed to the, to the victim and identified the victim as his wife. <laughs> fucking no. There's, th I, I can't even believe that this is a fucking real thing. She's not my type, I swear to God. She's not my type. Oh no. Oh God. And the person, the woman on the right. Of course, yes, conservatives make fun of Biden. This is the most dementia moment I've ever seen. I actually cannot believe that this just happened. Is your then wife? I don't Ivana? know. This was the picture. I assume that's John Johnson. Is that? That's Carol. Because it's very blurry. Now, in your June 21 statement. It's blurry, dude. You identified the guy with perfect correctness, and then you identified your victim as your wife. But it's, it's because it's blurry. Holy fucking shit. This is insane. You know, Trump might actually need glasses. Then he should wear them! He should wear his glasses then! This is like, this is like deep dementia. Holy shit, except the worst part is it's not dementia. This is lies. This is lie guy. His entire existence is lying at every single moment because there is nothing inside Donald Trump. There is nothing but a desire to channel the most unhinged crowd possible. That is it. And he can't, when, when faced with a situation where he has to simply lay out simple truths, 
he does sh apparently he confuses his victim for his wife which he doesn't remember his his ex-wife he doesn't remember what she looks like he doesn't remember when he started dating her and he will lie I should say doesn't remember and then he will lie about when his relationship with his ex-wife started holy fuck holy fuck which is in your June 21 statement which is DJT 20 You said that uh, Ms. Carroll was trying to sell a new book um, and that you said shame on those who make up false stories of assault to try to get publicity for themselves or sell a book. No. Yeah. That's right. Uh, before you made that statement, did you have any knowledge, one way or the other, of the financial arrangements between Ms. Carroll and the publisher of her book? No. Did you even know who her publisher was? No. Had you ever seen her book contract? No. Um, did you know anything about Ms. Carroll's financial situation? No. Did you know anything about her uh, expected book sales? N no idea. Before you made the statement that appears in DJT 20, do you know whether you or anyone working for you did any research on Ms. Carroll? I, I just don't Dude. know if it's possible somebody when when they heard this horrible accusation, it's possible that somebody did a little quick research, but not that I know. Oh boy, here we go. They're gonna get him again, aren't they? They're gonna get him. He's gonna have. It, they're gonna have. They're gonna have evidence that he directly authorized research, didn't they? Or did it himself? Another thing that you say uh, in your June 21 statement is that uh, Ms. Carroll was trying to carry out a political agenda. Yeah. Before issuing your statement on June 21, did you have Did you learn what political party Ms. Carroll Ms. No, Carroll belonged to? I didn't know that. Um, Before you issued your June 21 statement, did you have any documents indicating uh, that she was pursuing a political agenda? No. Okay, so this question here is to show that he actually had no evidence when he used the, the office of the president he used the fucking office of the president to claim that this woman had a political agenda, and he did so without any evidence. Can you believe that there are people out there who believe in things like the sanctity of the of the office of the president, the the legal the dignity of the of the office of the president when you have. And let's just be honest, Donald Trump isn't the first person to do this. There's been a number of presidents who've engaged in similar behavior. Donald Trump is just the worst. He's just done it the worst. And this guy's just like, uh, yeah, I'm gonna use the office of the president to shit talk every single person who I don't like without any evidence whatsoever. And I'm gonna just coast by on the on the hopes that it never comes back to bite me whatsoever. And he almost got away with it too. He almost got away with it too. At the end of your statement, your June 21 statement, you say, if anyone has information that the Democratic Party is working with Ms. Carroll or New York Magazine, please notify us as soon as possible. Did anyone ever notif notify you I about don't that? know. Sitting here today, you can't recall anyone who notified you? I don't know, yeah. One of the other things that you said about Ms. Carroll at the time appears in your June 24 statement, 
which is DJT22. And what you said there is, I'll say it with great respect, number one, she's not my type. When you said that Ms. Carroll was not your type, oh boy, here you we meant go. that she was not your type physically, right? Uh, I saw her in a picture. I didn't know what she looked like. Uh, and I said it and I... I saw her in a picture. I didn't know what she looked like. Contradictory statements. Say it with as much respect as I can, but she is not my type. And again, when you say type, you just refer to looking at photos. So you mean physically she's not your type? Uh, physically she's not my type. And now that I've gotten indirectly to hear things about her, she wouldn't be my type in any way, shape, or form. But when you were talking back on June 24th, oh my God. you were referring to her not being your type physically. I correct? saw a photo of her. Okay. And the only difference between me and other people is I'm honest. She's not my type. I take it the three... Super honest, bro. I'm super honest. You've been fucking in in the 20 minutes of this deposition. You have. I don't think that he's managed to say a single true thing. I don't think he's managed to be truthful once. Every single question he has said both both yes and no, or explicitly lied. Three women you've married are all your type. Yeah. You, wait, you just identified E. Jean Carroll as one of your former wives. Oh my God, dude. What is true social? It's a platform. That's well, we No, we just, this is the first cut that we just hit right here, I think. I don't think, maybe there's been small cuts, but this is the first major time skip we've seen. Let's see. Yeah, see, now it's jumped forward like an hour, like an hour and a half approximately. Anyway, let's continue. What is true social? It's a platform they that's been opened break. by me uh, as an alternative to Twitter. And your handle on true social is at real Donald Trump? I believe so, yes. Okay. Now, on October 12th, just a few days ago, you issued a statement on True Social about oh, Ms. Carroll's case, correct? I believe so, yes. And, um... Bonks Daily with the incredibly generous $5.50 donation. Hey, Demon Mama, thanks for streaming tonight. Just got back from my birthday dinner. Happy birthday! Let's tear into this news, shall we? Also, give the dough pats for me. I absolutely will do that. Thank you for supporting this show. This show is 100% viewer supported, so it means the world to me when people like you are able to throw a few uh, bucks into the tip jar. Thank you very, very much, Bonks Daily, and happy birthday. Let's tear in. The statement that you posted, who wrote that statement? I did. You yourself? Yeah. Um, did you post the statement yourself? Yes. Um, and in addition to posting the statement on True Social, you also sent it to the press. Yes, uh, it's called uh, Truth and Post. We post uh, much like uh, how would you say it? We put out a statement and we also put it on truth. Okay, let's look um, at the statement. Let's mark it as... Okay. What's my next number? 28. DJT 28. Okay, so this one... I can't read this. Well, we have a blown up version. Let's mark it as 28 and 28A. Same so what we have in front of you is DJT 28, sir, is the post as it appeared on True Social on October 12th. 2022 and a blown up version because we appreciate the, the reading the type is very small a blown up version that should be more legible do you have I both can of those? It, yeah. okay. so it says October 12 2022 statement by Donald J Trump 45th president of the United States of America this quote Ms. Bergdorf Goodman case is a complete con job and oh our legal God, system dude. in this country and and our legal system in this country but especially in New York State all why would you ever 
why would you ever tweet this shit out? I mean, I don't know what Donald Trump thinks is going to happen. Does he think that, 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 like, if he gets himself in as much legal trouble as possible, that as long as he's posting on, on Truth Social, that brave patriots will literally bust him out of everything? Because I don't think that's happening so far. So far, his brave patriots have completely failed to be able to actually rescue him from any of his garbage. He got, he, we, we just had the, uh, the recent uh, 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 arraignment situation he's now lost this case he fucking lost the election in january 6th with a giant fucking pant shitting embarrassment his what is he what is his strategy here like where the fuck is his brain at like i understand that he's kind of set in his ways but also just does he not realize that he's actually actively making it worse for him in every single case does he think that like the patriots are gonna come save him or something he's gonna lose the election again I like to believe that. I do think that in all likelihood, Donald Trump will lose the election again. Um, but also, again, I have said this before as well. If Biden gets sick or if Biden, God forbid, passes away from old age, Donald Trump has a shot at actually winning. The Donald Trump post january 6th post getting arrested and arraigned post getting uh, uh sued and found liable for sexual assault and defamation donald trump has a chance at being the president again it is actually terrifying and it's actually terrifying that that's a reality that we have to grapple with at all that a donald that donald trump that this fucking shitbag, obvious liar, scumbag, piece of shit even has a chance to come close to the president the first time, but not just that, a second time after all of this just screams about the fundamental state of insanity in America. That America is so far off the rocker. We are so far from even coming close to being a country that functions in any way, shape, or form. That there's any hope at like a, at, at like reconcile, like how do you reconcile with a political faction that literally is willing to completely look the other way at this type of behavior? Any political faction. How is it possible that there is a religious faction of the Republican Party, the biggest and most popular part of the Republican Party? The answer is, of course, what I always say, which is that the conservative movement in America, the GOP, is a stone around the neck of America, but also the world as a whole. They are so demented and their internal culture is so deranged that they literally think they don't care. They don't care that Donald Trump sexually assaults people. They don't care that all he does is lie to them. They don't even care that he lies to them. They don't care that he's a blatant fucking grifting piece of shit. All they care about is that he gives them the safe feeling that there's a daddy in charge. A brain-addled, lying, sexually assaulting daddy in charge. That's all, that, that is, that is the party. Okay, that's the GOP and people have to grapple with this reality that this is the this is the struggle in America right now. The struggle in America is between a group of people who literally do not give a shit about truth. They do not give a shit about sexual assault. They do not give a shit about minority rights. All they care about is establishing a hierarchy that makes them feel safe and nothing else. They will stop at nothing except apparently getting up off the couch. Maybe that's what's going to save us all. Maybe maybe comfortable couches really are what will save humanity in the end. Because if everybody can fucking realize that uh, we just need to find a way to, to navigate politics that makes it impossible for uh, a tr Fox watching people to actually get up and like go to the polls or whatever, then maybe that's the real way we save it. Maybe that's it. Maybe that's it. Maybe we need to develop a, a strategy. We need to make couches a little bit more comfortable and we need to figure out a way to make Fox News programming 
uh, 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 the most exciting on election days so that uh, Republicans just re won't get up off the couch to go vote. And maybe we'll fix it. I don't know. Maybe that's the answer. Just look at Peekaboo James is a broken disgrace. You have to fight for years and spend a fortune in order to get your reputation back from liars, cheaters, and hacks. This decision is from the judge who was just overturned on my same case. I don't know this woman, have no idea who she is, other than it seems she had a picture of me many years ago with her husband shaking my hand on a reception line at a celebrity charity event. She completely made up a story that I met her at the doors of this crowded New York City department store and within minutes swooned her. Swooned is in quotes. See you later, Anthony. It was a, a hoax day. and a lie, just like all the other hoaxes that have been played on me for the past seven years. Professional dork with the $10. Thank you very, very much. Ooh, woo, indeed. Thank you for supporting the show. It means the world to me. By the way, we'll take this little moment in the middle of this long Donald Trump text rereading to say, if you are watching and enjoying this wild coverage of an absolutely deranged deposition, uh, make sure that you subscribe to Demon Mama so you can keep hearing the signal. Your subscriptions and your likes mean the world. So like and subscribe down below and don't forget it. Thanks for being an imp. Let's continue. And while I'm not supposed to say it, I will. This woman is not my type, exclamation point. She's she has no down. idea what day, what week, what month, what year, or what decade this so-called event, in quotes, supposedly took place. The reason she doesn't know is because it never happened, and she doesn't want to get cut off with uh, caught up with details or facts that could be proven wrong. If you watch Anderson Cooper's interview with her, where she was promoting a really crummy book, you will see that it is a complete scam. She changed her story from beginning to end after the commercial break to suit the purposes of CNN and Andy Cooper. Our justice system <laughs> is broken along with almost everything else in our country. Her lawyer is a political operative and- Why would you put, I mean, he did say he wrote this post himself. I guess that's why he would put Andy Cooper in an official statement. Also, I love, I love the fact that Donald Trump still puts 45th president of the United States of America in his post because he still cannot cope with the fact that he got fucking bodied by Joe Biden. He can't cope. So he still just goes, uh, yeah, 45th president. And uh, if you ask me, there is no 46th. Cuomo crony who goes around telling people that the way to beat Trump is to sue him all over the place. She is suing me on numerous frivolous cases, just like this one, and the court system does nothing to stop it. In the meantime, and for the record, E. Jean Carroll is not telling the truth. Oh, cool. Is a woman I had nothing to do with, didn't know, and would have no interest in knowing her if I ever had the chance. Now all, I, now all I have to do is go through years more of legal nonsense in order Donald, to clear Donald my- Donald Trump is 76. For the people asking how old he is, Donald Trump is 76. But keep in mind, this is very stable, genius, man, woman, camera, car, dog, this guy. The guy who has spent the entire fucking last four years of his life pr trying to pretend that he has no mental- uh, issues whatsoever even when his brain was actually shutting off when he had like the worst COVID infection that anyone has ever seen and he could barely talk uh yeah this guy has no cognitive decline whatsoever now just so you guys know it is absolutely 100 percent possible for old people to not have cognitive decline um you know eventually when you're like if you get old enough that you're like like bedridden or whatever, there's obviously gonna be some level of cognitive decline, but there's lots of old people who don't get dementia. There's lots of old people who don't get Alzheimer's. Um, it's certainly possible that Donald Trump is one of those. One of the things that makes it so hard to tell with Donald Trump is because he's always been a gigantic fucking liar. The guy is the biggest liar who's ever lived on the planet. I don't think, like, he just, in this fucking, this the, what we've seen of this deposition, 
all he, he can't even answer a simple question like, did you buy presents for your wives? He's like, no, I didn't buy them presents except when I did. And I didn't do it often, but probably for their birthdays. Okay, well, did you buy them gifts? Uh, no, I didn't buy them gifts except when I did on their birthdays. But I didn't really do it then either, except sometimes I did. So it's like, dude, which fucking one is it? Name of her and her lawyer's phony attacks on me. This can only happen to quote in quotes Trump exclamation point. That yeah. did I read that correctly? Great statement. Yeah. True. Um, True. And now that you've heard it. <laughs> True me. Great statement me. Good job me. It again, and you have it in front of you. You again confirm that you wrote the whole thing yourself. I wrote it all myself. All myself. Did you now, at the beginning of your post, the reference Ms. Bergdorf Goodman is a reference to Ms. Carroll, right? That's right. Now, when you say in here, I don't know this woman and have no idea who she was, who she is, even though you're using the present tense. You're referring back to your knowledge as of when she first made the allegation. I still don't know this woman. I think she's a whack job. I have no idea. I don't know anything about this woman other than what I read in stories and what I hear. Uh, I, I know I know nothing about her. Okay, Do you well, see? Just... He, he literally, oh my God, he's actually incapable. No, no wonder he was found guilty. There is, how could you ever not conclude that this motherfucker is guilty when asked, in this statement, you say you don't know her, and yet it's very clear you know who she is now. Were you referring to the past? A smart liar or whatever would just say, yes, I was referring to the past, but he can't even do that. He has to go, no, I don't know who she is. I only have read a whole bunch of articles about her. So no, I don't know who she is. And I'm referring to the now. Like, oh my God. Yeah, sorry, found liable, not guilty. I don't wanna use the wrong terminology and get, uh, get, Trump lawyers funded by uh, by T-shirt coming after me. By the way, like, can we just take a moment? Can we just take a moment of silence for all of the uncles, brothers, dads, and grandpas out there who are about to add another fifty-five dollar Donald Trump shirt to their uh, collection? Do you guys remember during the last court case that he got fucked on when he was selling that that mug fake mugshot T-shirt that looked like it was made uh, at like a a mall T-shirt stand, like one of those instant print mall T-shirt stands? And they were like, Donald Trump, God needs Donald Trump to, to, God needs you to save Donald Trump now. You need to buy a t-shirt now or you're going to hell. And like the Donald Trump campaign sent out like those emails to every single Donald Trump supporter. Like if you don't buy this $60 Donald Trump shirt, Donald Trump will kill you. And, like it's literally like, <laughs> Uh, <laughs> it's this meme every every single <laughs> it's this one <laughs> this meme right here every single uh, 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 conservative dad in America got an email that said if you don't buy a t-shirt we're gonna kill you <laughs> Oh my God. Anyway, moment of just a very small moment of silence for all of the uncles, dads, grandpas, and brothers out there who still subscribe to the, to the, uh, to the Donald Trump fucking <laughs> email. When can I buy a demon mama shirt? Relatively soon, TM. Dorky with the three gifted tier one subs. Thank you very, very much. Thank you for the sh supporting the show. Dorky says, hey, Demon Mama, always wanted to do this for a very long time, and now I can. Gift subs for the chat. Thank you so very much. That's super, super kind of you. Thank you so much for supporting the show. It means the world to me. 
Dude, I get those emails and I have no idea where. I saw, I swear someone signed me up a as a joke. Oh yeah, people do that all the time. Uh, people uh, sign you up for crap emails all the time. I once got a, a, a friend of mine as a prank once signed me up to um to like Jehovah's Witnesses, Mormons, and Scientologists as interested. And so we had Mormons, Jehovah's Witnesses, the Scientologists never actually showed up, but Mormons and Jehovah's Witnesses came to our door to talk to talk to us about our interest in the church. What an asshole thing to do. I got so mad. They signed up our address for that. It was so fucking annoying. A lot of apples with the unbelievably generous three gifted tier one subs. Three more white names. Genocided. Anyway, let's continue. Let's continue. The distinction I'm trying to make, sir, is that when the allegation came out in 2019... Stay safe, said, Mars you, you, Falcon. I think it's your testimony that you had no idea who she was. I still don't. Well, today you at least know that she's a plaintiff in a case suing you, correct? Oh, yes, that I know. Okay. <laughs> Rhodes, Rhodes says, Demon Mama, I think you should sell, if you don't buy this shirt, Donald Trump will kill you shirts with the fact checked by real American Patriots image. I absolutely should do that. I should absolutely do that. That would be amazing. <laughs> and it'll be, it'll be the only shirt on my entire store that looks like hell it just looks terrible it's like a low res image the text is impact font it's all blurry and it just says if you don't buy this shirt now De D donald trump will kill you oh my god but i know nothing about her i think she's sick mentally sick okay um you say in this post use a strange word which I want to ask you about. You say she completely made up a story that I met her at the doors of this crowded New York City department store and within minutes swooned her. Do you see that? Yeah. What does swoon her mean? Uh, that would be a word, maybe accurate or not, having to do with uh, talking to her and talking to her to do an act that she said happened which didn't happen and it's a nicer word than the word that starts with an f and this would be a word that i use because i thought it would be inappropriate to use the other word um, and it didn't happen okay i i was curious when i read this so i looked up the word swoon in the dictionary and it, under the dictionary it means to faint with extreme emotion that's not what you meant here Objection to form. Uh, well, sort of. That's what she said I did to her. She fainted with great emotion. She actually indicated that she loved it. Okay? She loved it until commercial break. In fact, I think she said it was sexy, didn't she? It was very sexy to be raped. Didn't she say that? So, sir, I That is, in, that is an insane thing to say. Why would he, and why would you answer? Why, oh, oh my God, he's so, this is a matter of public record forever. Just mind you, this will be in history books, okay? In the future, well, maybe that's generous. Maybe there won't be history books in the future at this rate. But uh, can you guys imagine the amount like this this is going to be talked about in american history this is a part of the american the record of american history forever blablato says if you want some kind of explanation for this in the anderson cooper interview she made a point that some people find the idea of rape sexy 
not that she does, but that some people are attracted to the power. Trump is trying to clip chimp her. That's not just a clip chimp. That's just lying about what was said. Yes, rapists are people who find the idea of rape sexy. You think Trump is a bad guy? Ah, uh, gee, I don't know. I couldn't make up my mind. He's trying to make her look deranged. This is fucking, this is one of the most insane things that I've ever seen in my entire life. Can we hear that back? Yeah, let's just hear this whole thing back. Let's just listen to what he volunteered into the record of the court, okay? The, he was not asked to explain in this great detail. All the lawyer was asking is what he meant by the word swooned. Under the dictionary, it means to faint with extreme emotion. That's not what you meant here. Objection to form. Uh, well, sort of. That's what she said I did to her. She fainted with great emotion. She actually indicated that she loved it. Okay? She loved it until commercial break. In fact, I think she said it was sexy, didn't she? It was very sexy to be raped. Didn't she say that? So, sir, I just want to confirm. It's your testimony that E. Jean Carroll said that she loved being sexually assaulted by you? Well, based on her interview with Anderson Cooper, I believe that's what took place. Holy so you, we can fuck. We can define that. You'll have to show that. I'm sure you're going to show that. But she was interviewed by Anderson Cooper, and I think she said that rape was sexy. Which it's not, by the way. But I think she said that rape was sexy and it was, she actually said things that were very strange. And then she was a different person after the, when he said, we'll take a break right now. We're going to take a break right now. He didn't like what she was saying. He was very upset with what, and then she came back and she was a much different woman the second, in the second half, so to speak. Just babbling, just babbling insanity. This clip, the clip of him saying that should just be, that should be used in every single anti-Donald Trump attack ad for the rest of all of existence. That should be the most used line forever. If the Democrats know at all what they're doing, they should play that line over and over and over again in every TV in America. That is one of the most insane things. I can't even like, it's, it's, I do not have a, a particularly high level of respect for political officials, okay? You guys know this. I'm pretty critical of political officials. And even I am baffled that a former president of the United States would ever be caught dead saying anything like this, let alone volunteering it during a deposition for a sexual assault case. My fucking God. This guy is the head of the Christian faction of his party, okay? This is the guy the Christians chose. Just remember that forever. I don't care if you're a Christian. I don't care if you're right-leaning, centrist, liberal, leftist. Just remember that forever. This is the guy that the Christians of this country chose, voted for, and threw their support behind. That's, that's the state of conservative Christianity. That's the state of conservatism. That's the state of the GOP in America. Never let them fool you into thinking that it's any other way. The conservative movement in America, the Christians included, re they respect power and nothing else. All they care about is their strong man. They don't care about any other belief. They don't care about sexual impropriety. They don't care about literal rape. They don't care about basic human decency. Holy fucking shit. Sea Snake Jiri, thank you very, very much for the tier one subscription. Stuff fluff, oh goodness. Oh goodness indeed. Thank you for supporting the show. Holy fuck.
What a mess. Here's the transcript of that vi interview with Anderson. If you, you can find the whole quote and context. I'll take a look at that. And so the question I'm asking you is, did she say in that interview that she loved being sexually assaulted by well, you? Well, she said something to that effect. I mean, you'll have to take a look at the interview yourself. Uh, I believe she said rape was sexy, to which Anderson Cooper is dying. He's saying, let's get to a commercial break immediately. I think you better watch the interview. I'm sure you have, but you better watch the interview. In the interview, when Ms. Carroll talked about rape being sexy, isn't it true that she said that's a view that many other people hold? Oh, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. All I know is I believe she said rape is sexy or something to that effect, but you have to watch the interview. It's been a while. And just to clarify, you, I think you said a few minutes earlier that you used the word swooned as a synonym for, you said the F word, for sexual intercourse? Yeah. Okay. That's because that's what she said. What do you mean? She never used the word swooned? No. Uh, she, she said that I did something to her that never took place. There was no anything. I know nothing about this nut job. Uh, okay, then you go on to break? say in the statement. Did he just break? He just snapped? The lawyer was just like, I don't know. Okay, that's enough for me, I guess. I guess that was, getting that as a response is like, it's like gold for this lawyer. And while I am not supposed to say it, I will. Why were you not supposed to say it? Because it's not politically correct to say, read the next, go ahead, that she's not my type. Yeah, because it's not politically correct to say it, and I know that, but I'll say it anyway. She's accusing me of rape. A woman that I have no idea who she is. It came out of the blue. She's accusing me of rape, of raping her. The worst thing you can do, the worst charge. And, and you, know it's, you know it's not true, too. You're a political operative also. You're, dis you're a disgrace. But what? what? What is he doing? <laughs> he just lays into the fucking lawyer? That's the lawyer, right? Yeah, that's her, that's her lawyer. He's just without any evidence accusing a lawyer of being a political operative in the court of law. What, you didn't expect that? It's a stupid move. You're in a case, you're in a case where you're being, you're up at the stand, you're being deposed for defamation and on the record of the court, without any evidence, you accuse a lawyer of being a political operative. That is the dumbest move you can possibly imagine. You're already on, you're already being tried for defamation. And you just decide to add more to the pile? This is deranged! I, I can't, I don't, <laughs> He needs, Donald Trump needs, I don't even know. I don't care, honestly. I hope he keeps, bear, I, I hope he keeps burying himself. I was gonna say he needs like, somebody needs to pull, somebody needs to stop him. He's like self-harming to a degree that's, that's greater than any I can imagine. But honestly, keep it coming. Keep it coming. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Yasmin, it's, it's, uh, it, this is something else. <laughs> yeah, defense, exactly. Defense counsel, oh my God, what the hell am I doing? Where, how did my life come to this? My career is over. He doesn't care, he won't actually go to jail and any fine he gets would be nothing to him? Okay, but this type of stuff adds up. Like, 
these things are adding up. And if people see how it is like this, then all the other, that, that he, this is the way he reacts. All they have to do is keep pressing it. He's done a lot of other things. We've talked about this in the past. Donald Trump has a lot of things that he could get in trouble for. And let's just say, my personal belief is that there are a lot of things that Donald Trump has done that he has not yet been tried for, that he has not yet been brought into court. But this shit is going to add up. People seeing how flagrantly he's willing to lie in public, it does add up. You will, will never be able to reach Donald Trump's base. Donald Trump's base is they believe that he's chosen by God. They believe everything, all of this was constructed by the deep state. They don't believe any of this is even real. They think that this tape was created by a wizard, that Donald Trump never even did a deposition, that a, uh, a deep state wizard wizard created this um you can't reach those people however everyone else in the entire world sees this crap and goes nope 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 he's done for he's done and there are even and they're not common but there are even republican voters people who aren't dyed in the wool GOP hardliners who see this shit and go, I will never vote for this guy ever again in my entire life. And the, there are more, there are more Democrats and centrists by a long shot than there are Republicans. Like you add up all the Democrats and all of the centrists in the country, and there are way more of them than there are MAGA Republicans. The MAGA Republicans are deranged. They are violent and angry and evil people who make everyone's life worse. They are a weight around the neck of the world, like I have said but there's way more of everybody else and every other remotely sane person on the planet hears this shit and goes, what the fuck is wrong with America? What the fuck is wrong with this guy? <laughs> this, is, this is what Donald Trump is trying to do to the lawyer. Mind crush! Yeah, exactly. He's trying to pull a Yu-Gi-Oh move. She's accusing me, and so are you, of rape, and it never took place. And I will tell you, I made that statement, and I said, well, it's politically incorrect. She's not my type. And that's 100% true. She's not my type. Now, in your true social statement on October 12th, what about voter disenfranchisement? It is actually incredibly true. Like right now, voter disenfranchisement, this is actually something I wanna cover on this channel more because I feel like I haven't done it justice, but also I'm not like, I only have so much time and I'm mostly a political entertainment channel, um, but I still wanna talk about it nonetheless. There are a lot of red states right now that are deliberately pushing uh, laws um, to restrict student voting uh, student voting access. So for example, um, in many states, a valid student ID is a, a valid way to go and vote. It counts as an ID. So if you go to the voting, if you go to the polling location and you have a valid student ID, they go, there you go. It's a photo ID. It's issued by a uh, reputable, uh, 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 you know, uh, institution. That counts as a photo ID. Here you go, go ahead and vote. Um, and also in a lot of places, it, it's very common for polling places to be located at a university. The reason for that is fairly obvious. College students, by and large, don't tend to own their own cars. So because college students are adults, they are legal voting adults, it makes sense to put a polling location there because we all know that these people might not be able to have an easy time practicing their democratic rights if they don't have a voting location within range of their school that they're going to because statistically, they don't own cars. So, um, a lot of red states right now are pushing laws that forbid voting locations from being on university campuses, which is 
obviously targeted at disenfranchising citizens it's it's designed to prevent people from voting and you have to you have to obviously ask the question well why do they care about students voting well we know why they care about students voting because students tend to be slightly more liberal and so they instead of accepting the fact well a lot of students are liberals and they want to vote and they have a right to vote instead they try to find a way to disenfranchise them and a lot of red states right now are also pushing uh, laws that ban student IDs as a valid form of ID, even though we all know that a student ID is a super fine reason for the purpose of voting. Keep in mind, voting is very secure. Every vote uh, from a person is triple checked along the path to make sure that somebody isn't double voting. Those, like, there's a lot of security that goes into counting votes. Um, so, a, 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 a student ID is more than enough to ensure that people are, are safe, uh, that they're not like fraudulently voting or whatever. Um, but a lot of right, right, red states are trying to push these laws to make it even harder for students to vote. And it's kind of obvious. It's actually very obvious the reason why they're doing that. It's always been about control. It's always been about disenfranchisement. They can't win a fair election, so they have to cheat. They have to break the law to make it harder for people who have a right to vote. Remember, every adult in America has a right to vote. That's a constitutional right. If you're a citizen of the United States, you have a right to vote. Republicans want to make it hard for you to actually be able to use that right. They want to cheat. Let's go. Um, you use the word hoax. It's all good. It's Specifically, you say it's not, it's not it's not relevant to the It is segment. a hoax and a lie, just like all the other hoaxes that have been played on me for the past seven years. You oh, see that? I, I yeah. forgot what I meant to say. I meant to say at the end of that, apologies, uh, it will take a lot of voter suppression to outrun this, okay? Donald Trump got clapped by Joe Biden. It would take a phenomenal amount of voter suppression uh, to, uh, to be able to suppress the vote enough. Um, that uh, that you know uh, that 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 Donald Tr that Donald Trump is able to escape his reputation at this point. Uh, I think that the biggest risk right now, the biggest risk, is uh, voter general voter apathy that people don't care at all and simply don't go to vote at all. And the uh, but the true biggest risk is if if Joe Biden doesn't hold out until the election. If Joe Biden gets really, really sick, or if Joe Biden passes away from old age, that's going to be a big danger. Other than that, personally, I don't think that Donald Trump has a shot in hell. Yeah. What's this? This is this this is Donald Trump's ideal supporter. Donald Trump wants every single uncle in America to own the Donald Trump butter bust. The dancing Donald Trump Santa Claus, the Donald Trump trading cards, 600 Donald Trump TV shirt uh, t-shirts, the Donald Trump TV tray and lunchbox, the Donald Trump dining set. The Donald Trump fucking condom set. Donald Trump bed sheets. All of them priced at like 60 to $70 a pop regardless of the product. You want your, your $45 Donald Trump bottle opener that bends the first time you try to open a bottle with it because it's made out of like fucking tin foil. All right, let's get back to this. Not the Donald Trump toilet paper? Oh, I bet they've got the Donald Trump toilet paper. Let's continue. Recall making that statement. Um, and I take it 
what you're saying there is um, Ms. Carroll fabricated um, her claim that you sexually assaulted her, correct? Yes. Another board person says a local VHS store had trumped the game. We played uh, two two years ago at uh, on July 4th. I did a bit uh, where I was Patriot Mama. I became a MAGA supporter for J July 4th, and we played Trump the video game. Do you guys remember that? We played two Trump video games. Both of them were garbage. We got to do that again. Maybe this year I'll do that again. That was really fun. There's more. There's so many Trump games. You guys have no idea. We won't do Trump games this year, though, but we might do Patriot Mama. That would be fun. We haven't done Patriot Mama in forever. Totally. 100%. Now, fair to say, you'd agree with me, would you not, that you use the term hoax quite a lot? Yes, I do. Um, CNN reported that you used it more than 250 times in 2020. Does that sound Jeez, right could to you? Be. Christ, my I've man. I've had a lot of hoaxes played on me. This um, is one of them. And how, how would you define the word hoax? Uh, a fake story, a false story, a made-up story. Something that's not true. Something that's not true, yes. Um, sitting here today, can you recall what else you have referred to as a hoax? Sure. The Russia, Russia, Russia hoax. It's been proven to be a hoax. Uh, Ukraine, Ukraine, Ukraine hoax. The uh, Mueller situation for two and a half years. The Ukraine, you what? What is that? Is that the Biden? Is he referring to like the Biden laptop? Wait, wait. Hoax ended in no collusion. It was a whole big hoax. Uh, the lying to the FISA court hoax, the lying to Congress many times hoax by all these people, this, this scum that we have in our country, lying to Congress hoax. The, people are saying that's the Ukraine phone call thing, but I thought that was, I thought that was part of the Russiagate, wasn't that? No, it's the time that he, he intimidated Zelensky for info on Biden and got impeached. Oh, oh, that one. That one, but he got impeached for that. He, fu he fucking got impeached for that. Spying again, again, his, his, his believers will see this and think that a wizard wove this, uh, wove this video out of fey energy. My campaign hoax, they spied on my campaign and now they admit it. Uh, that was another hoax and I could get a whole list of them. And this is a hoax too. This, when you say this and that. There's this ridiculous situation that we're doing right. It's a big fat hoax. She's a liar and she's a sick person in my opinion, really sick. Something wrong with her. Okay. Um, in addition to the Russia, Russia, Russia hoax, the Ukraine, Ukraine, Ukraine hoax, the Mueller, the Mueller or Mueller hoax, the lying to FISA hoax, the lying to Congress hoax, and the spying on your campaign hoax, isn't it true that you also referred to the use of mail-in ballots? Oh my God! As a hoax? Yeah, I do. Sure, I do. I and think they're very dishonest. Mail-in ballots, very dishonest. Every single sane place in the world that does elections uses mail-in ballots because there's no security difference of any difference. He's, it's literally the biggest cope. This is reminding me, do you guys remember, anybody here remember when we did the, uh, the post election day copium streams? When we were seeing the, the like Donald dot win meltdown of people screaming and crying, like worse than, worse than any SJW crying compilation you can possibly imagine. We were just going directly to Donald Trump like to, to Truth Social, Rumble, all of these different places and just watching people react. And they were literally just like, ah, ah, they got him, ah, this, he, he can't keep getting away with this. That is, that is what this reminds me of.
trying to say that mail-in ballots is like saying it's like saying that using like it's like saying that 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 telephones should have wires forever like oh every every tell every wireless telephones arr, that's how the goblins sneak in false messages into your ears you always have to have a wired telephone otherwise if you're using the wireless the goblins can whisper into the message and you won't hear what your friend is trying to say there were people like that, but they're not the president. They're not supposed to be the president. If you think that you shouldn't use a wireless phone because goblins will insert things that you didn't say into your wireless phone calls, you should never come close to the office of the president, okay? I'm sorry. Let me just remind you of this. Oh God, we have to continue. We have to continue. And isn't it true that you yourself have voted by mail? I do. <laughs> I do. Sometimes I do, but I don't know what happened. <laughs> I told you! It's the most... It is his nostrils of... There's no skin left in his... There's no fucking membranes left in his nostrils it's because the amount of copium this man is huffing. There, He has no interior. His insides are coated with pure copium. It's just so cucked. So cucked. What happens to it once uh, once you give it? I have no idea. Are you familiar, I'm sure you are, with something that's often referred to as the Access Hollywood tape? Yes, I am. Okay, let's play let's mark it and play it as what thirty-five. Absolutely amazing. You know, and she used to be very, she's still very beautiful. I moved on her, actually. You know, she was down on Palm Beach. I moved on her, and I failed. I'll admit it. Whoa. I did try and fuck her. She was married. <laughs> huge news, Sarah. No, no, Nancy. Yeah. No, this was marriages. And I moved on her very heavily. In fact, I took her out furniture shopping. She wanted to get some furniture. I said, I'll show you where they have some nice furniture. <laughs> I took her out furniture. I moved on her like a bitch. But I couldn't get there. And she was married. And all of a sudden, I see her. She's now got the big phony tits and everything. She's totally changed her look. She's your girl's hot as shit in the purple. Whoa! Oh, yes! Whoa! Oh, yes, the Donald is good. Whoa! <laughs> oh, my man! Wait, wait, you gotta look at me when Just you get out of here. Just remember, this up. That is very you give me the thumbs look up. Look at you. You are a piece. You gotta put the thumbs up. <laughs> you gotta okay. get the thumbs up. You can't be too happy. Can you first? Yeah, let me. It's very funny. You gotta give the thumbs up. There. Uh, you and I will walk there. Oh my god. Maybe it's a different one. It better not be the publicist. No, it's, it's her. It's her. Yeah, that's her, with the gold. I better use some Tic Tacs just in case I start kissing her. You know, I'm automatically attracted to beautiful. I just start kissing them. It's like a magnet. You just kiss. I don't even wait. And when you're a star, they let you do it. You can do anything. Whatever you want. Grab them by the pussy. I can do anything. Look uh, at those legs. All I can see is the legs. No, it looks good. Come on, Shorty. Oh, nice legs, huh? Oof, get out of the way, honey. That's good legs. Go ahead. It's always good if you don't fall out of the bus. Like Ford, Gerald Ford, remember? <laughs> Down below. Pull the hell. Okay, this 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 tape is disgusting, but I always forget about getting stuck in the bus. The game getting stuck in the bus, you never get to see that part because everybody only plays the grabber by the pussy, but he fucking gets stuck in the bus right after saying you never want to fall out of the bus, look like an idiot like Gerald Ford, and then he gets fucking stopped by the door. Incredible. Just look at this shit. Bus. Like Ford, Gerald Ford, remember? <laughs> Down below. Pull the hell. Hello, how are you? Hi. Mr. Trump, how nice are seeing you? you. Terrific. Nice to meet you. Terrific. You know Billy Bush? Hello, how are nice you? to see you. How are you doing, Ariane? I'm doing very well, thank you. Are you ready to be a soap star? We're ready. Let's go. Make right. me a soap star. How about a little hug for the Donnelly? Just get off the bus. Like okay, hug absolutely. <laughs> Melania said this was bushy. okay. That's you in that video, correct? Yes. Okay. Yes. And am I correct that that video was recorded um, in 
January withdrawn. Am I correct that that video was recorded in September 2005? I guess that would, I don't know the date, but whatever date it was is fine with me. And am I correct that you were engaged to your current wife sometime in 2004? I don't know. Am I correct that you married your cur current wife in January 2005? I don't know relative to that tape, no. And the person you were speaking to, it's now famous, in that video was Billy Bush? That's right. Please this let is me. Very, this is very old news, fully litigated during debates, during everything else, fully litigated. Okay. And you know what I said then, and I say it now? Locker room talk. That was locker room talk. Okay. That's what goes on. And you did say in the video that you, quote, moved on her heavily, correct? Excuse me? You do say in the video that you, quote, yeah. moved on her heavily. Uh, I, I did say that, yes, okay. absolutely. And you do say in the video that as part of trying to have sex with this woman, you took her furniture shopping, correct? Uh, we actually did look for furniture, yes. So that was true. You actually Quick. took this woman Nancy. I think so. I've been, it's been a long time ago. It's how long dude, is it? Dude. A long time ago. But I think so. I it, do think so. Is that the only occasion when you took a woman shopping? I think so. And you say, and again, this has become very famous. Dude, this is pathetic. In this video, I just start kissing them. It's like a magnet. Just kiss. I don't even wait. And when you're a star, they let you do it. You can do anything. Grab them by the pussy. You can do anything. That's what you said, correct? Well, historically, that's true with stars. It's true with stars that, that they can grab women by the pussy? Well, that's what it's. If you look over the last million years, I guess. That's <laughs> this, this is the one clip that I saw before, and it's still making me laugh. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Stars for over a million years, a million years ago, for the last just, you know, a small look through the history of the last one million years, you know, fuck. The first star invented the wheel. Maybe you've heard of him, you know? He could grab people by the pussy, you know? He tied a stick to a rock, clubbed her over the head, grabbed her by the pussy. God. God damn it. Insane. You may have heard of a guy named Fred Flintstone, yes, a million years ago. He, you know, his feet, he'd run around like, uh, he'd run around with his feet outside of the vehicle. You know, he had an alarm clock that was a, a pterodactyl. Uh, you might have known of somebody, Fred Flintstone, he could do it. He was the first star. His buddy Barney, real slob, looked like shit, nipples protruding. It's been... Largely true, not always, but largely true. Unfortunately or fortunately. And you consider yourself uh, to be a star. Your Zoolander impression? I can't do Trump, okay? I don't care, but I'm, I'm doing my best out here, okay? Especially because my voice is already getting hoarse from laughing too much here. I think you can say that, yeah. And now you said before, a couple of minutes ago, that this was just locker room talk. It's locker room talk. And so does that mean that you didn't really mean it? No, it's locker room talk. I don't know. It's just the way people talk. Okay. Now, are you familiar with a woman by the name of Natasha Stoinoff? No. Natasha. Stoinoff. You'll have to give me a little bit do of you a remember she wrote, Do you remember she wrote about you a lot when she worked at People Magazine? Oh, I, I do remember there was some woman that wrote, and then she, a long time later, I think she wrote a wonderful story, and then a long time later, as I remember it, a long time later she said that I was aggressive with her, but she wrote the most beautiful story and then all Notice of that he just admitted on video that it was locker room talk, but uh, supposedly he was telling the truth in his locker room talk. The lawyer explicitly said, okay, but you actually did take Nancy out to go furniture shopping, at which point you made a sexual move on her because you wanted to have sex with her. And he's like, yeah. And then she's like, okay, but you say this is locker room talk. And he's like, yeah.
And she's like, okay, but you actually did those things that you supposedly did in the locker room talk, right? He's like, yes. Sudden, like, is it a year or two years later, she comes out with this phony story uh, that I was a great, I said, well, why would she have written such a good story for People Magazine? She wrote a really nice piece. And then all of a sudden, like, uh, you know, years or months, many months later, she came up with this phony charge. Let's watch a video, and again, I apologize for the technology, where you talk about Ms. Stoinoff's allegations. Oh boy, here we go. Are we marking this? Um, we're gonna mark here it, it's a, a clip here of a video go. from a campaign event in West Palm Beach on October 13, 2016, and we're gonna mark it as DJT 36. Then there was a writer from People Magazine who wrote a story on Melania and myself on our first anniversary. The story was beautiful. It was beautiful. It was lovely. But last night we hear that after 12 years, this took place 12 years ago, this story, a new claim that I made inappropriate advances during the interview to this writer. And I ask very simple question. Why wasn't it part of the story that appeared 20 or 12 years ago? Why wasn't it part of the story? Why didn't they make it part of the story? I was one of the biggest stars on television with The Apprentice, and it would have been one of the biggest stories of the year. Think of it. She's doing this story on Melania, who's pregnant at the time, and Donald Trump, our one-year anniversary. And she said, I made inappropriate advances. And by the way, the area was a public area. People when did they say this video is from? It's actually fascinating. If you watch his old rally videos to how he is now, dude, his energy has drained so much. Also, his crowds have drained so much. The energy is so low. The Trump train is totally running out of steam. It's like a fucking deflated balloon. <laughs> Sleepy Dawn. Yeah, the COVID really got to him. It really did. All over the place. Well, also, I don't even think it was just the COVID. I, I think he actually, I, I think he actually couldn't conceive of the fact that he, that he would lose to Joe Biden. I think it like actually fragmented a piece of his soul off. Like when he lost to, to Joe, it was just like gone. Some part of him permanently died. He's never reached that energy again since then. 2024 Dark Brandon versus Sleepy Don, fucking true. He's gonna get fucking clapped. Take a look. You take a look. Look at her. Look at her words. You tell me what you think. I don't think so. I don't think so. You'd agree with me that the person you were just talking about in that video was Natasha Stoinoff, correct? Yes. Okay. You're familiar with a woman by the name of Jessica Leeds? Just, no, I don't think so. But explain, go ahead. Does that mean that this Refresh your recollection yes, of who Jessica Lee is. This woman made up a story. Oh my God. Just, no, I don't know who that is. Oh, it's this. Oh my God. Like your it's client pathetic. made it up. Just made up a story. Having to do with sitting, me in a, sitting next to me in an airplane. And uh, I mean, I'll have to read this again, but that story was so false also but this was i guess making out as opposed to what your client said this story was so false this is a disgrace also and do you recall speaking about ms leeds allegations at campaign events in 2016. i might have i thought it was so like like your client i thought it was so ridiculous Okay, let's take a look at the next video, which is DJT 38, correct? Hopefully our great movement, and there's never been anything like this in the United States, and the only way they figure they can slow it down is 
to come up with people that are willing to say, <laughs> oh, I was with Donald Trump in 1980. Nothing changed. I was sitting with him on an airplane. He's, he's adding commentary over a court deposition tape. Man, this guy is dumb as fuck. And he went after me on the plane. Yeah, I'm going to go after. Believe me, she would not be my first choice, that I can tell you. Man. You don't know. That would not be my first choice. When you said in that video that Ms. Leeds would not be your first choice, you were referring to her physical looks, correct? Just the overall. Not, I, I look at her, I see her, I hear what she says, whatever. You wouldn't be a choice of mine either, to be honest with you. I hope you're not insulted. I would not, under any circumstances, have any interest in you. Dude. I'm, being, I'm honest when I say it. Uh, she, I would... A, bo a fucking wild play. Just, again, ca ca cartoonishly large shovel. Like one of those, like a kid's beach shovel, but the size of his fucking head. Shh. You're referring to her looks. Well, I wouldn't fuck you either, bitch. Oh my fucking god. Not have any interest in. The video we just watched, where you talked about Miss Leeds. What else did you know about Miss Leeds that would indicate to you that she was, would not have been your first choice, other than how she looked? I don't know. I think I probably saw her on television or something. Uh, but I don't want to be insulting. But when people accuse me of something, I think I have a right to be insulting because they're insulting me. They're doing the ultimate insult. They make up stories and then I'm not allowed to speak my mind. No, I, I disagree with that. No, the, she would not have uh, been anywhere on a list. I just just wouldn't have been for me. No. It's disgusting. It's what she said was disgusting. Can you imagine doing that on an airplane? What she said? I'm doing that on an airplane. That's almost as ridiculous as doing it in Bergdorf Goodman in a dressing room. Who does he, wh where does he think he is? Does he think that he's like at a political debate? He's talking to the lawyer that's deposing him. Like, wh wh I, I, I just, I don't know. I guess he, maybe he's always been this bad in court. To be fair, we don't get to see him in court very often. Usually that stuff is like, because of the nature of it, we don't get to see him in court very often. This is like, horrible. Isn't it true that just a few minutes ago, you couldn't remember the date of your engagement to your current wife, Melania? No, no, no. <laughs> We're talking about a different thing. Talking about a woman where something happened that was. Now he's gonna lie about the fact he couldn't remember. It was just like two minutes ago and he, he couldn't remember the date, and now he's gonna lie about it. This guy is done. His brain is cooked. It's gone. It's, it's on the tape, you fucking idiot. He's done. There's no fucking way. Oh. oh my god. Oh my fucking god. This is next level. This is next level even for Donald Trump. Holy fucking shit. Inappropriate, right? Inappropriate. It was highly inappropriate. She would remember that date. Is I would imagine she would have complained to the airline. She would know the flight. She would know everything about it. She didn't even know the year. As I remember it, just like your client doesn't know the year, doesn't know anything about it. If something happened like that to your client, your client would know the second, should know down to the second, should know the day, the month, the year, right down to the second. In the last paragraph of the Dude, you can't remember how to fucking tie your shoes. Who the fuck are you to talk? You haven't remembered a single thing in this in this entire conversation, except when you do. You thought that the victim in this case was your wife, you deranged freak. 
do we, that was like 20 minutes ago in this video, in this thing, it was like an hour ago that he mixed up the victim in this case with his ex-wife. That is a next level. Made on June 21 that appears in the Laura Litvin tweet, DJ 220. You said as follows. Last paragraph where? Uh, of D, uh, DJ 220. Um, Go ahead, what is it? You say as follows. The world should know what's really going on. It is a disgrace, and people should pay dearly for such false accusations. You see that? Yeah. And the person you meant who should pay dearly for such false accusations was E. Jean Carroll, correct? Yeah, and I think their attorneys, too. I think the attorneys, like you, are uh, a big part of it. Man. Because you know it's a phony case. Man, that was insane. I, I can't, I, I can't even believe that half of what we just watched actually happened. That is... To be fair to the people who think this was we woven by a wizard, I don't think a wizard could make like a, a more damaging deposition for Donald Trump. Like I don't, I, I actually don't think that even the Illuminati could come up with a way to make Donald Trump look worse than Donald Trump did. That is just like everything about that, insulting the lawyer, just lying within the same second. The, the confusing the victim with his own ex-wife and just like being like, that's my ex-wife, isn't it? Oh, she was a great lay. Oh, it was so good. I loved it. Oh, she was so good in bed. And they're like, um, Donald Trump, uh, that's the victim, the alleged victim. Oh, uh, I mean, she's disgusting. I can't see anything. It's, oh my fucking God. <laughs> Like, what the absolute fuck is going on? This is, by the way, the most, this is the most watched part of this video, or the, no, the second most watched. The grabber by the pussy is the most watched, the second most watched part of this video is this part right here. Of you, a black and white photograph that we've marked Let's just watch DJT it again real quick. And I'm gonna ask you, is this the photo that you were just referring to? I think so, yes. And do you recall when you first saw this photo? At some point during the process, I saw it. That's, uh, I, I guess, I need husband, to see this again. John Johnson, who was an anchor for ABC. Nice guy, I thought. I mean, I don't know him, but I thought he was pretty good at what he did. Um, I don't even know who the woman. Let's see. I don't know who. Th it's Marla. You're saying Marla's in this photo? That's Marla, yeah. That's that's my wife. Which woman are you pointing to? I know. That's Here. Oh, that, the person oh, okay. you just pointed to was oh, Eugene Carroll. Who is that? Oh, did you hear that bang softly in the background? That was the sound of his own lawyer committing suicide in the back in the back room when that moment happened. If you guys just heard that soft bang. That's my wife. Uh no, that's the alleged victim, sir. Oh my god. <laughs> literally, literally, yeah. <laughs> true. Wait, so is this actually true though? Wait, is this is this true? People are, I've, okay, this is a viral tweet. The rape part of the charge ended up being a no because E. Jean Carroll said, that, said on the stand under oath that she didn't know for sure if she was penetrated by his genitalia because she couldn't see or feel his cock. She says tiny mushroom. I mean, that wouldn't be the first person to, to say under oath that Donald Trump has a tiny penis. 
like like multiple people have 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 said that Donald Trump has a tiny penis. That is actually true. Jesus fucking Christ. I wonder if we could get a clip of that. I don't think there's a, I don't know if we can find a clip of that. Jesus Christ. Nothing wrong with a micro penis. Okay, for Donald Trump, the guy who tries to pretend that he's like the macho man who has no flaws, it actually is quite funny to discover that his penis is so small that nobody can feel it. Stormy Daniels said that it was the size of a baby carrot. Jesus fucking Christ. How does this absolute troll have so many mistresses, ex-wives, or ex-wives? Money. And he's the president. He's unfathomably rich. You guys, like, have to understand, he has so much money that... Unless we have a few Oilers in chat right now, some pretty rich folks in chat, which if you are here, please consider funding my channel. I don't make a crazy amount of money from my show, but I would love to. So please consider funding my show if you're really, really rich out there. But if you're not, I don't think you can comprehend exactly how much money Donald Trump has. Donald Trump has so much fucking money that none of us can actually fathom exactly how much that amount of money is. This guy is an heir to a real estate tycoon who became a real estate tycoon of his own right and a serial grifter and the president of the United States. The guy is so loaded, it's unbelievable. It's a, uh, yeah, reality show host. Anyway, that was one of the most insane things I've ever seen in my entire life. Uh, like I said, it won't matter to a single one of Donald Trump's fans. They won't believe that this video is real. They won't care even if they did believe it was real because they believe that God handpicked Donald Trump to be their savior, which of course... He isn't. And that's kind of the sad part, right? That's one of the sad things about the state of America. There was a large chunk of the politically active populace um, who are so miserable. They're so truly and deeply miserable that they have chosen Donald Trump as their savior. I want you to think about how horrible and bad and miserable your life must be that you find Donald Trump a figure of hope. And I want you to remember that there is a decent chunk of the adult populace who fall into that category in America. That is an indictment of our entire nation. That is an indictment of our entire way of living and system of life, okay? It is, uh a sad state of affairs. However, that faction is full of some of the most despicable people. And regardless of how pathetic and sad their lives are, they're only, the way that they engage with the world is to inflict their misery on as many other people as possible. To support a guy who tried to ban Muslims, who successfully banned trans people from the military, who is currently threatening to create internment camps for homeless people, who is currently threatening to create an expedited death sentence for what he calls drug dealers, who thinks that there should be less 
uh, uh, judicial oversight in trying drug dealers because he hates them so much. Uh, a guy who put people in place to remove uh, the rights of women to safe abortions in this country. These people are, in short, the enemies of the sane world, the enemies of a good world, not even a sane world. That's not even, that's not even putting it clearly enough. They are an enemy, they are the enemies of any sort of good existence. And the only way that this world will ever get any better is if this, these people are thoroughly defeated politically. If people like Donald Trump, sexually assaulting freaks like Donald Trump are never allowed to get near power ever again that these people are defeated over and over and over again until this faction no longer can manage to, to carry any political power. And until then, we will continue to be plagued with the problems they bring. Let's keep that in mind. However, I will say, it has been a good time to not be a Republican because Basically, the entire right-wing movement in America is collapsing in on itself. Their desperation has led to an unfathomable amount of infighting and their mistakes are catching up with them. Their endless lying is catching up with them. Their fucking endless, heinous behavior is finally, at least to some degree, catching up with them. We have seen Steven Crowder, Tucker Carlson, Donald Trump, uh, all of these people taking a fall recently and thank fucking God for that because these people have plagued our lives for the last half decade and it's about time we see some of them face even a drop of the consequences that are coming their way. George, people are mentioning George Santos too. We haven't even talked about that. Anyway, if you all enjoyed this absolutely deranged but hilarious reaction, please make sure that you press the subscribe button down below so that you don't miss any of my videos, so you catch the signal. And also, make sure you hit like and tell me your thoughts. Comments help all of my videos grow, so leave a comment down below, even if it's just something small. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you all for being my imps. And keep tuned in.